Welcome, everybody. Uh, as we know, pastor's at a retreat and getting filled to overflowing, and that's going to be an awesome thing when she gets back home. Amen to that. So at this time, um, pastor, of course, always seeks the Holy Spirit as to who's going to share the word. And so tonight we have the honor of Marcy's going to come up here and share what the Lord has placed upon her heart. And so welcome, Marcy, and we are ready. Hi, Marcy. So I kind of had thought that I was going to be talking about healing. And uh, then when I pressed in with the Lord, uh, other things started coming up, and I wasn't getting uh, the stuff that I had kind of planned on for a while now on healing. So this is just a conglomerate of what he gave me. Mm. <laughs> take it. Yeah. yeah. So how is everybody tonight? Good. Yeah. Yes. Good. Well, what I was going to talk to you about tonight is about uh, personal, personal battles. You know, everybody has them. Each one of us has them. And uh, some, some are bigger and some are smaller. Some are bigger to me than the same thing. Like, it wouldn't bother Dan if his car broke down. For me, I would be devastated because I don't know how to fix them or what to do, you know? So, but uh, everybody has stuff, you know, it's called life. Yeah. And uh, some people, uh, I have friends and some people I know, you know, I've come across, I know a lot of people that deal with a lot more than that. Uh, they deal with, uh, they're dealing with addictions. They're dealing with uh, gambling. Uh, I know someone that has a tough food addiction. I have a couple friends that have uh, shopping addictions, money addictions. They just cannot stop. Mm. And it's not good because there's not a lot left over for what you need your money for. Right. So uh, mm -hmm. then along with, those th along with those things, and that's not all of it, you know, we all have things every day that happen or, or uh, that we try to shake off and push through. But out of all of this, sometimes uh, depression can occur. It can try to latch onto you and just stick with you uh, and uh, try to bring you down, yes. you know? And we're always trying to stay above, above that. Um, it could be, you could, could also be suffering from loneliness. Uh, from phobias, from mood swings. Uh, some people have a bipolar uh, personality disorder. Uh, there's just so much that is known now in the world that we're up against. And um, so the Lord's really been, really been pressing into my heart to be sensitive Amen. to that in people Amen. and to talk about it. Because uh, sometimes if we have somebody that wants to talk about these sensitive issues, we're kind of like, oh, okay, you know. Uh, but uh, just to be sensitive, uh, and they are also distractions yes. from your commission, from pursuing the Lord. You know, it's a distraction in your life. It, it keeps you from relationships. It keeps you from pursuing the Lord quite often. Physical illness can be another thing or an injury if you have that. It's such a distraction. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I had an issue a while back that, thank goodness, thank you, Lord, it went away. But I was having uh, some pain, and it was like, no! Oh! You know, and I love to walk, and I love to ride my bike and stuff. But it distracted me in my sleep. It distracted me on a daily basis. Um, you really have to, I had to fight through it to pursue the Lord, to continue doing what I do. Um, so, but the good news is, is through all of this stuff that I'm, uh, that I'm seeing and hearing, uh, the Lord is so good. And he, he has told us, and the, brought me to the word, as soon as I can find it, Isaiah 61. 
Where is it? Bear with me. Bear with me. And this is, a, I'm sure, a familiar scripture to everyone. And if not, it's a good one to be hearing. Here it is. So the good news in all of this is that according to Isaiah 61, 1 through 3, in Jesus' name, we speak liberty to you. You are no longer captives. You are set free in Jesus' name from anything that was done to you. Whatever that was done in any way, shape, or form or harmful, is it's not it's not there anymore I declare the power and the blood of Jesus Christ to set you free in Jesus's name I declare that we are released from prison Amen. you are no longer in prison Amen. for anything that has been done to you or that you have done the shackles and chains are off of you you are free in the name of Jesus amen yes. amen. So, amen amen, amen. amen. And that was not verbatim out of the Bible, but it's what I have here in front of me. So mm -hmm. that's the idea. So um, another big thing that I see and that I've experienced myself is fear uh, latching on to you. And fear <coughs> is, uh, tr you know, it's an issue with trust. You can't really... If you suffer from fear, fear of man, fear of things that are happening, you can't trust, and you can't trust in the Lord. Um, I remember feeling like uh, with the Lord that, because I was, I was afraid of a lot of things, but I, I wouldn't be able to, uh, that God was mad at me, and that I wouldn't be able to have a relationship with the Lord because he was mad at me for the things that I had done. So by believing that his intentions are always good yes. and pushing through, it's the good news of Isaiah 61, 1 through 3. Mm -hmm. And it, uh, those things all shut you down. They just shut you down. And uh, if you can get the perfect love concept of the Lord yes. into your heart, if you can just get his perfect love, concept into your heart and know that he loves you he loves you he loves you and that that if you truly believe that Jesus went to the cross for you that there is no no uh, no issues that you have repented that you are uh, a new person in Christ so God is good and his love is perfect love yes. it casts out all fear because there is no fear in his love. Mm -hmm. And Jesus has paid for everything on the cross. He paid for every sin that we have committed, every sin we have thought about committing. He paid for them all. So there's, there's no fear. There's definitely no fear in that. And uh, the other thing the Lord wanted me to talk a little bit about was uh, trauma. And trauma, and uh, I think everybody has some thing that happened to them, something that changed their life a little bit, something that hurt you, uh, something, you know, your trauma might not be what my trauma was. Um, I suffered from trauma as a child under 10 pretty much. I had some momentous uh, things uh, happen to me, but um, other people, it could be one thing or it could be a bunch of things. Everybody's trauma is different and we can't compare them to each other. Um, trauma is like an earthquake. I read that, it was so good, that it just can uproot and scatter everything around you know uproot your life and scatter everything around and then it leaves cracks yes. and damage right. Right. in you you might not see that crack or that damage 
manifest for years. But I believe it will come out. If it's, if it's something that you haven't dealt with and that it's burrowed deep down or you stuff it down, mm -hmm. I believe it will come out uh, right. some way or another if you don't, if you don't get a hold of it. And um, trauma changes you. It biologically changes you. You start having, uh, I know for me it was fight, flight, or freeze. Uh, I liked flight a lot, <laughs> just I'm out, you know, in many things, uh, not conducive to uh, having a relationships or communication or uh, following through on things. Uh, but again, the good news is, is the Lord went to the cross for us right. for those things. Amen. But in this world today, we're so, uh, there's so much more information about uh, what trauma does to people and, and how we can help, how we can help it. Uh, I just want to really, really press, press the information to you that if you know anybody or you have it, that we do have, uh, we do have a great trauma ministry here that I personally have been through myself. And I actually went through the first full segment and I went through it again a little bit because some stuff wants to try to wiggle around a little bit. But I've never, and I've also uh, assisted with the ministry in many cases, and I've never, never had anybody have a bad result or anything it has done it has been more helpful and uh than it has anything else it's just an extremely anointed ministry here at river of life and i know other places uh have some things too but it is amazing i have seen people set free i've seen people start their journey of being set free and healed, that's right. uh, healed of these emotional stresses that have changed us. And that's, how do you go about it? Well, you have to be sick and tired of allowing these things to disrupt your life, right. or you just can't, uh, you can't function. You may be having panic attacks, or you might be uh, drinking too much, or you might be, doing some drugs or something that you and it doesn't work anymore to stuff it down you know so you just you really need to find a safe person a safe place the lord will show you uh and and uh come forth with that secret that you have or, or the hurt that you have come forth with it and once it's out of the darkness and it's not a secret anymore that's part of uh, the healing process right there. The enemy can't use that against you anymore. Um, it's just so good to find a safe place to get rid of it and to start healing. Um, it affects, you know, it just affects how we do life. And uh, this brought to my mind my grandmother has been gone a long time because I obviously am not a spring chicken. <laughs> but uh, she, the story always was with her. She was a wonderful woman and I loved her so much. She died when I was pretty young, but she uh, was amazing. She was a historian, she was a teacher, and she had had a daughter that died uh, at seven years old. And her daughter had, uh, back then would have been you know, a long time ago, a childhood disease that they didn't have inoculations for yet. And my grandma lost that child and she was quarantined with her. She never talked about it. She never talked about it to her family. She never talked about it uh, to my mom, uh, her daughter. Uh, she, she went forth after that happened. She adopted two kids because she didn't think she was ever gonna have any more children of her own. And she kept teaching, and this was a long time ago when most women didn't work, and then she just, 
she filled her life with so many things. And then she had my mom. So she had three kids. They moved from Detroit to Onekama. And she had a store. She taught full time in Kotmish. Uh, but at 70 years old, she had a breakdown. And um, that's what it was about was the, her daughter that passed away of that illness uh, 70, you know, 60 some years before that. It, it got her then, you know, and she just, she just fell apart. She recovered, she got help, uh, and, and she was okay, but she had to deal with that. She had to deal with that because it, she just couldn't go on anymore without it. So that's just a little story about uh, how things do come out eventually. Um, and, and you can't compare because somebody else, um, I've been following a woman on social media that lost a son <clears throat> to, uh, to fentanyl. Mm. And, uh, but he didn't pass away. He overdosed. She, her and her husband got to the hospital they're, I'm not sure, but they're very, uh, very on fire for the Lord. And they started praying over him in the hospital. They spoke life over him. He was, told, they told him, the parents that he was brain dead, his organs were shutting down. Well, he didn't die. He came back to life. Um, the mom stayed with him every day. They played praise and worship music. She. She worked with him, physical therapy. She, uh, she danced with him. They had him standing up and doing things. He started speaking. He had eye contact. Um, she had a year and a half with him. And uh, he had 17 miracles occur during this year and a half that he did come back. But the, the, these people's story is amazing. And her son passed away this March of an infection in, uh, in his ileus, but uh, they are so on fire yet for the Lord mm -hmm. and to stomp out fentanyl and to not let this happen to anybody else ever again. Mm -hmm. And these people just, just are on there right now and they started an organization and she's speaking and she's, uh, she's just amazing. She said, yes, I am brokenhearted. Yes, I am hurt, but I will not let the enemy Amen. put his foot on my head. I put my foot on his yeah, head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So in Jesus' yeah. name, yes. bless these, all these people. You know, uh, those, those struggles are some of the worst we can imagine. But yet, but God makes it possible. He just does. He does. His perfect love makes it possible. So... Uh, people do recover. Yeah. We do recover. People recover from trauma, from hurt. The biggest thing is you know <clears throat> it's going to hurt when you start giving it up. It's going to be uncomfortable. It's going to be painful. Uh, in my case, a lot of it, once it was out, it was, thank goodness, yeah. a relief, you know. Yeah. Um, I'm a little bit older though, and I think I started dealing with uh, trauma, getting rid of it, you know, probably at 50. So my hope and prayer is that nobody has to carry that stuff to 50 or 70. That there is so much known today about mental health and dealing with this stuff. And we're fortunate enough to know the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior, that we can overcome that you guys can overcome it. You can help people overcome it at a much younger age yeah. so they can live their life how it was intended to be. Yeah. So they can be, <clears throat> be happy, be glorious, have, don't put, you, you know, you won't put your trauma on your kids. You know, like I, I'm, I know I did. You know, I misbehaved. I misbehaved for many years, you know, and there's nothing, Nothing you can do about it, but you can going forward. Right. You know, yes. starting right here and right now, you can go forward with all of it. Yes. You know, and you can recover, and you can uh, you can let the Lord do miraculous works in you. Yes. 
in Jesus' name. He's so good. He's so good. And uh, just a side note, in all that I've been through and everything I've seen, I've seen people um, be freed from addiction like that because of the Lord. I've seen other people struggle that don't know the Lord. Uh, I've seen them struggle for years. I've seen some of them uh, not make it, many not make it, believe me. But I've seen, I was, I got rid of smoking just like that. God took it from me. And I'm telling you, I don't know how many times I quit before that, that it was, oh, you know, I couldn't sleep, it made me sick. But because of the Lord, he will take those yeah. things or he'll show you how to do it. Yep. It's just so much easier doing it his way. Amen. Yeah, it's so much easier doing it his way. Um, and if you do go through trauma, uh, therapy, trauma, ministry, um, you can have, I'll say, like I went through it and I was really ready to give up anything, even things I wasn't, you know, I didn't know about, but I had a few little things like still pecking at me or uh, something happens in your life that brings up something that I hadn't thought about. So, you know, those things can happen. We're human. We're human beings. Um, don't don't ever think that there's not a way to get through these things and to give them up. Yeah, that's right. Uh, I've seen, I think that's what I've seen mostly in the ministry here is people go twice, mm -hmm. you know? I guess that seals the deal at the end, yes, but yeah, it just, it just gives, yeah, it gives you a peace of mind. Uh, and mostly it's just uh, the enemy tries to come at you too because here you are like, yes, I'm doing great and I feel healed and I feel like I can move forward. But um, the enemy, of course, is going to try to peck at you and be, uh, be a liar and tell you that those things didn't work and that there's no value in them and that you, you, know, you, uh, you shouldn't be grasping onto that. Well, it's the truth. It's the truth. So, because you are fearfully and wonderfully made. The Lord created each and every one of us uniquely and purposely. Purposefully. He, there's a plan for each one of us. And a lot of us, you know, we just never knew it. We never knew it. So, that, that's what I had to talk about uh, was trauma healing, God's love, uh, that Jesus came to set the captives free, yes, amen. and he did it. Yeah. So we just need to grab a hold of it. We need to be there for each other. Um, pastor spoke on forgiveness on Sunday, and that was so good. It was so good <laughs> and so true. So true. We all need to do that. But... Uh, I feel like this, it's like the next step then after, because if you can forgive, you can start working on yourself, mm -hmm. you know, and you can start getting rid of the junk. And as she used to say, the junk in your trunk. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> so I wanted to uh, read a scripture over you. And I should be able to find this one pretty easily. Because this one is uh, for protection, for guidance, yeah. to give you comfort, and, and help take you to that safe place. And it's, it's headed safety of abiding in the presence of God. Yeah. Psalms 91. And I'm praying this over each and every one of you in here and those that can hear the word through other devices tonight. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of you, Lord, 
You are my refuge and you are our fortress, my God in whom we trust. Surely you will deliver us from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover us up with his feathers and under his wings we shall take refuge. His truth will be our shield and buckler. We shall not be afraid of the terror that comes at night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. noonday. A thousand may fall at our side and 10,000 at our right hand, but it will not come near us. Only with our eyes shall we look and see the reward of the wicked because we have made the Lord, who is our refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place. No evil shall befall any of you, nor shall any plague come near your homes. No evil. So good. For he shall give his angels charge over you, each and every one of you, to keep you in all your ways. And in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra. The lion, the young lion and the serpent shall be trampled under your feet. Because he has set his love upon me. This is a promise. This is a promise. Therefore, he says, he will deliver us. He will set us on high because we know his name. Mm -hmm. he shall call upon, we shall call upon him and he will answer us. And we will be with him in trouble. He will deliver us and we will honor him. And with a long life he will satisfy us and show us his salvation. So in Jesus' name, just bless each and every one of you guys tonight. Amen.